Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the RTDS Technologies User Spotlight Series. This is week number seven. My name is Katie Sidwell. I'm a simulation specialist on the sales and marketing team at RTDS Technologies. And today we are continuing our webinar series and welcoming two users of the RTDS simulator to present exciting new work with this tool and technology. If this is your first time joining us for the User Spotlight series, the format of today's event will be two presentations that are about 20 minutes each. And then after both presentations have finished, we will do a live question and answer period and discussion. But the way the Q&A will work is that you can submit questions all throughout the presentations via the Q&A widget. It should be on the left side of your screen, or you can access it by pressing the Q&A button in the icons toolbar at the bottom. So if you submit your question via the Q&A widget, one of the presenters will respond to you during the presentations, and then we'll discuss some of the questions afterward. If you're watching on demand right now, you can still submit questions and we encourage you to do so. And those questions will be responded to via email. There is also a chat widget and we really like seeing familiar names there, seeing some new people. So please head to the chat window and you can introduce yourself. Let us know where you're from and it's uh, nice to virtually meet you and to have you here today. And finally, before we start our first presentation, I want to point you toward the handouts widget. If you can't see the handouts uh, window, you can go to your icon toolbar and click on the icon that looks like a piece of paper. And this will allow you to access the slides for the presentations today. And it also contains a link to a survey and we would really appreciate it if you could give us some feedback. It's a really quick survey. You can do it at the end of the session today and let us know what you thought. That would be really helpful. Probably the most important thing that the survey gives us is what you want to see for upcoming topics for webinars. So please feel free to provide some suggestions and we will try to provide that content for you. Okay, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first presenter. Shailendra Singh received a PhD degree in Power Systems from the Indian Institute of Technology, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, India, and an MTech degree in Electrical Engineering with a specialization in Power Systems from the National Institute of Technology, Kurukshetra, India. He was a visiting research scholar with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory from April 2018 to October 2018. He also worked as an assistant professor with Graphic Era Hill University, Bhimtal, India, and Graphic Era University, Dehradun, India, from 2012 to 2014. Currently, he is working as a lecturer, electrical engineering, in the Board of Technical Education, Government, of Uttar Pradesh, India. Dr. Singh was the recipient of Bhaskara Advanced Solar Energy Base 2018 Fellowship supported by the Department of Science and Technology of the Government of India and the Indo-US Science and Technology Forum, New Delhi. He was awarded Posoko Power System Award under doctoral category for his research work organized by the Power System Operation Cooperation Limited in association with Fundamental for Innovation Technology Transfer, IIT Delhi. He has published various research papers in repute journals and conferences, Dr. Singh is serving as a reviewer in various journals and conferences such as IEEE Transactions, IET, Elsevier, and Wiley Publications. His research interests include smart energy distribution systems, microgrids, electrical energy storage, and distributed energy resources integration. Please welcome Shailendra Singh presenting multi-timescale real-time voltage and VAR control using real-time co-simulation platform. Thank you for, uh, for the nice introduction and hello everyone. In this webinar, I'm going to present some research work on multi-time scale real-time voltage and VAR control using real-time co-simulation platform. The outlines of the presentations are as follows. Overview of electrical power distribution network, then concept of volt VAR control, followed by time origin control and proposed multi-time scale control, then real-time implementation, real-time co-simulation platform followed by conclusion and future work. 
So overview of the electrical power distribution, I will give, give brief idea about distribution network. So broadly distribution network are categorized in operational wise as passive distribution network and active distribution network. In passive distribution network, power flows from substation to load and that is unidirectional power flow. But nowadays integration of distributed energy sources such as DERs, wind power, photovoltaic power have the wave the direction of uh, power flows in both directions. So now power, power flow direction is not uniform, it is bidirectional power flow. To, prop, um, to handle these uh, low carbon devices such as electrical vehicles and charging stations and distributed energy sources, we need an efficient uh, advanced distribution management algorithm. So we need a ADMS that can handle the all operational, operational issues in nice manner. So this whole architecture referred as a active distribution network. So in this in this work, I have proposed a smart volt work control algorithm for a DMS to handle the voltage control and power flow of the distribution network. So concept of volt work control, the concept of volt work control means voltage of the distribution at Python and gradually decreases as the distribution line distribution line length increases so voltage drop occurs due to distribution lines resistance so with, with the help of voltage control devices such as reactive power voltage regulator at feeder end or, or, or in the field devices voltage can be controlled traditionally, vo traditionally voltage reactive power control through the traditional devices such as OTC transformer step voltage regulators capacitor banks so my using line drop compensation mechanism. The main drawback of this scheme is poor voltage profile, open loop and, and poor observability. So the proposed work is here a smart volt wire control algorithm. Smart volt wire control algorithm uses traditional devices as well as utility devices such as distributed energy sources especially focusing on smart and water based voltage control. So the advantage of <coughs> Smart voltage control is that it uses voltage optimization is uh, methods in closed form and provide the many uh, large benefits such as healthy service voltage optimized set points high availability and AMI enable accurate load mounting in closed loop control. So now the um, now the work start from here uh, the time horizon control the time horizon. The con control can be categorized in two parts, slow time scale and fast time scale. So it is referred as a multi-time scale control. In multi-time scale control, what we did, suppose we have a 24 hours duration. This duration is categorized in an, uh, one, two, is capital N number of parts in solid black arrows. Then this further, this N number of parts, suppose one to two is further sectionized, is one to small number, small numbers as, uh, as shown in solid, as shown in solid arrows. So if we see, if we see uh, this, these arrows are further uh, divided in under section of time. So this and this uh, this uh, is blue blue sided arrow is further divided in a small uh, uh, green arrow solid lines. It further simulate the analysis in real time. So that we can see the here. This is the multi time scale control. So in multi-time scale control, we had uh, as early said the slow time scale and fast time scale using slow, slow acting devices, OLTC devices, OLTC SBs and CBs and fast acting devices using smart inverters. So next control framework, the control framework in, in uh, divided as slow time scale control devices, duration generally minute to hour, minute to seconds and video scheduling is done through OLTC, CBs and uh, voltage regulator or step voltage regulator of smart inverters. Control approach. Control that we generally use aggregated approach using centralized or decentralized control. In fast time scale control, time duration up to few seconds, we use scheduling is done through the using smart inverter devices only. Control methods generally use in autonomous approach, auto approach using distributors or local control. So uh, methodology in this study we have considered using STS using STST via centralized model to be viewed and fast time scale control using local local control using troop controller. So in this we can see that, that centralized control with local control framework has been proposed to analyze the impact of multi time scale control. In fast time scale control, in fast time scale control we can see sudden 
situation occurs such a dynamic change in network configuration trend transient cloud moment the solar eclipse that can consequently violate the system voltage limit so the additional video devices they have limitations such as voltage fixed time uh, fixed time operation slow time steps and frequent operation of these may be reducing their life so we need efficient algorithms and fast devices such as decentralized autonomous control using smart inverters so world war group car local con controller is very useful for slow time scale uh, for fast time scale controller as well as slow time scale controller the revised atp 1547 is from 1547 to 2018 report that er must di each dr must have bar compensation uh, as demanded by power system operators so uh, standard group function is this uh, this is a piece wise linear structure this parameter group parameter p1 p2 p3 p4 and that band is most critical parameters for any volt war group control characteristics so in real time implementation what to what we can uh, how we can implement uh, the uh, uh, developed uh, local control algorithms and uh, aggregate control algorithms in real time implementation step by step i will discuss first local control algorithm in autonomous mode then centralized control with local control algorithm using co real time co simulation platform so implementation of control algorithm first local control using volt war group method is in real time centralized with local control near real time control algorithm realizing real time digital simulation platform so the rts platform generally have software parts as referred as a rs cad version or and also have visualization in real time window in a monitoring device next is a <coughs> hardware part this hardware part is a machine which is connected to uh, a network connection ethernet to the uh, software part or rs cad version so this uh, whole study this whole developed control algorithm in rs cad uses the dis distribution mode for analysis purpose in distribution grid algorithms so local control in uh, local control is distributed in autonomous approach so dynamic voltage control in fast uh, FTC using smart meter has been done. If we see the analysis in power RTDS platform, so we have developed in network asset load PV review controllers in RS CAD and get the and uh, feed the load profile and solar profile and in this uh, in real time window. When in real time window, when RS CAD uh, program is running in real time simulation, this local controller get the information in local region and base. and decide the volt war curve algorithm the what should be the set points of smart inverter which can be control signal is to send the review control algorithm and just be a volt war group control algorithm executed executed locally in real time uh, inverter is for modeling of all drs we have used uh, average model for developing the dr models in this study using the distribution mode analysis the case study of our simulation result and case study has been carried out uh, uh, most important is the cloud transient impact had been studied uh, using the uh, simulation part in the presence of electrical vehicle load and in the absence of electrical vehicle load so three so i called to validate the developed control algorithm in this study we have considered modified the rtp 34 per system having three pv nodes and uh, prosumers and uh, electrical vehicles and charging station subsections the more detailed study detailed study can be found in uh, this uh, one of the my published paper which is uh, published in our interest uh, transaction on the steel application so next uh, if we see the analysis of so in this uh, whole analysis what we uh, of line study we have observed eight node 89 is the most vulnerable for any reduction in dr output so if we uh, see the some sort of snapshot of rs cad version of test uh, test system and controller so this is a snapshot of iterp 30 iterp 34 bus source node this is a test distribution line transmission line and this and this is and uh, in this uh, snapshot i have shown the bus 8 890 which is most vulnerable this this 810 bus 00 as ev charging stations pv power plant spot loads and smart meter for observability so to control the local local algorithm to to control the local controllers the we use group controller so group controller is modeled here in this in rs cad version this provide the control signal to smart inverter by a group controller so next uh, this is uh, called referred as controller So case study first cloud transient impact in absence of EV loads. In this uh, study, we observed the EV loads are absent. 
we can clearly see the without controller red solid line shows the voltage profile without controller at node 890 this is lowest voltage profile when we enable the brew controller uh, when we enable the voltage brew uh, uh, controller voltage across uh, within the permission level this is solid black line shows when without voltage controller our red solid line shows the voltage is below the permission level that is 0.95 this is the and if we and this figure shows the reactive power composition by the PV inverter how reactive power composition by group controller a black solid line shows the reactive power composition during the group control actions next is uh, if we see the centralized uh, uh, next I can uh, case study second cloud transient impact in presence of EV load uh, so this second case of city shows the impact of electrical vehicle. So we can see the clear the smart inverter with PV only uh, with the red lines shows that it is unable to uh, uh, control the voltage when uh, so solar radiation much fall fall higher higher than the case first. So in this case we need a advanced we need a, a advanced react, a, a extra reactive power composition that can provide the voltage. So so this. Uh, EV inverter from charging station provides the reactive power compensation. So this blue blue solid line shows the uh, voltage profile with in the presence of PV and EV inverters. So here second figure clearly shows the reactive power compensation from both PV inverters and PV inverter. Now if we see the uh, this is first I controlled only local control action autonomously. Now for, for centralized the local control algorithm in this STD voltage control is done in both STSC and slow time scale and FTSC using the traditional VVC and smart inverters. So this is realized this is centralized control algorithm and this is the local control algorithm. So this is centralized and local control algorithm set up through, through the external agents such as Python or MATLAB, whichever which in this city I have used Python. So, so for this I have developed real-time co simulation platform, which we like discuss in further slides. So, real-time co simulation platform. So, real-time co simulation platform is developed in the in, uh, in the integration of these softwares RTDS, Python, and OpenDSS. RTDS is real-time simulation and distribution mode. As external agent use Python and OpenDSS communication setup through. Software based communication using listen on port and TC protocol has been used. So, this is the uh, real time post simulation framework. This RTDS and uh, RSK runtime is the network connection through and uh, it is converted as a socket server. And this Python and so uh, load flow server open DCS act as a socket client in this study. So, implementation via three uh, for implementation of this co simulation work I done through via three layer dispatching algorithm. This offline algorithm, this is scheduling reached work on offline. This is not a discussion part of this presentation. This main two part is discussion of this presentation. This is online dispatch. Dispatch layer, this is online and real time control again. So, dispatch layer is work for 15 minutes interval near real time analysis. Uh, with the uh, getting when they are getting the measurement from globally grid measurements with 15 minutes interval and this local measurement based on adaptive troop controller version real time simulation analysis which can handle the all fluctuations in transient analysis in locally of the controller. A test case study uh, for test case study STFC and FCSC for STFC forecasting error impact and FTSC cloud transient impact. This study I one twenty three distribution system has been considered with the following ratings of load model and VVC devices. So, if we see, uh, for this is a load load and solar radiation data for this is referred from. Uh, so, this study conduct uh, for the duration of fourteen hours to fifteen hours each fifteen minutes interval simulation has been carried out. So, for runtime window of in RTDS for IEEE 13 bus system is created for centralized monitoring, central control panel, and local monitoring control panel. The centralized control monitor includes the tape, traditional and uh, fast skill uh, control algorithm, devices position, set points, such as type position, stop voltage, CAVR, cap tanks, such step points, and PV reactive power from PV inverters and PQ load meter. For local control, group controller monitoring has been then when in this block that can handle the locally controlled access. So online validation of STFC correction has been carried out for one hour duration as we discussed. This is so the reactive power 
demand and active power demand we can see that around 3.6 percent energy can be saving achieved with uh, loss so losses reduction so another is uh, under stfc office emergency actions cases study had been performed in two cases first case is a sudden cloud transient appears again 14 to 15 hours has been considered this amount of reduction uh, so in this water tree were 1.23 node 114 is 1.04 the reduction so in this study uh, we use adaptive real time adaptive load bar control instead of fixed loop control because fixed loop are uncontrolled parameter so they are not able to cope up sometimes reactive power compensators for voltage control so new loop parameter as flexible and control the reactive power compensation according to voltage drop so uh, this case uh, for sudden cloud transient appearance first case carried out in two sub cases span single pv power outage and due to sudden cloud transient appearance you can see the result analysis of this how zero relation falls and the uh, pv1 power outage uh, outage occurs and this we can see the adaptive bvd control successfully handle the all fluctuations and control the voltage within the limits is blue line uh, solid blue line so the adaptive bvd and that so the fixed pvd which is not capable to handle the voltage profile now if we see the next uh, uh, sub, sub cases of multiple pv outage in case of multiple pv outage occurs more than one pv outage occurs as we can see the active power of all three pvs pv1 pv2 pv3 goes down due to cloud transient appears in this case we can you can see the analysis how uh, no, how adaptive bvd successfully handle the voltage profile and maintain the feeder voltage limits again so again fixed bvd is not unable to capable uh, unable to handle the voltage profile so reactive power compensation through uh, all in uh, pv inverter type zone do pv1 and pv3 providing the reactive power so, uh, support and pv2 is still not able to uh, provide is still not providing any rate of power compensation due to their own limitations or maybe they have fixed their their uh, rating parameters are different of proof controllers okay in case second sudden, sudden cloud transients appears <coughs> Sudden cloud transients, uh, uh, transient disappears. In this case, when we have a, a cloudy day and forecasted accordingly, and a sudden uh, cloud disappears and uh, so DR power output increases, so in this case, over voltage power may be appears. So, so, so in this case, uh, in this uh, study, we have observed PV3 is most vulnerable for over voltage over voltage so when we can clearly see if we suppose we have a 1.05 limit, limit limit limitation of voltage limit limitation for over voltage so in this case we can see the without group control is above the uh, uh, above the voltage profile 1.02 if no control again when we apply this adaptive group the voltage in solid line green so the adaptive group control voltage profile over voltage profile is uh, not occurs and it is below the Point point below the limits of 0.12. Actually, in observing case voltage over voltage problem, inverter in absorb the reactive power and under voltage problem, inverter inject the reactive power compensation from the inverter. So conclusion of the and future of work conclusion. So multi multi time scale VVC work comprise centralized works well for all situations voltage regulation and PPV along with group controls of work for IV gutter normal mode. Develop control and uh, success free handle the disturbances uh, of active distribution network. Active BVD control handle the voltage fluctuation and changing operating scenario. Real time, develop real time course selection platform using RTDS successfully handles the uh, multi time scale operation and it can be used for large scale practical distribution system. So, next step, next step. Modeling and control of uh, RSK level for uh, microbit applications, validation in control algorithms in uh, controller in loops and hardware in loops, real time course simulation for platform for integrated transmission and distribution distribution system, and uh, <coughs> development of uh, ADMS uh, application for uh, inclusion of other ADMS applications such as. Uh, Fault location storage and network reconfiguration with the uh, with the combination of fault wire control algorithms. Uh, <clears throat>
Thank you. With the acknowledgement of this, this work supported by funded supported by TBHU and Indo US Science and Technology Forum and DST Government of India. I would like to thank uh, Power System Engineering Center and NRL uh, for their suggestion and valuable suggestion and support. Thank you so much. So, thank you. That uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you everyone for your kind attention. I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you so much, Shailendra, for that presentation. And thanks to our audience as well for your questions. We are trying something a little different moving forward where we publish some of the questions throughout the webinar um, to provide a little bit more interaction. So I hope that's been helpful as well. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our second presenter. Arman Gasai received the BSc degree in electrical engineering from the Isfahan University of Technology, Isfahan, Iran, in 2011, and the MSc degree with high honors in electrical engineering from the Iran University of Science and Technology, Tehran, Iran, in 2014. He's working towards pursuing his PhD degree at the Center for Applied Power Electronics, University of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He's the recipient of several awards, including the Ontario Graduate Scholarship and the Queen Elizabeth II Graduate Scholarship in Science and Technology. His research interests include control and operation of microgrid-based distribution power systems. His expertise includes dynamic control of converter-interfaced distributed energy resources, formal supervisory control of microgrid systems, and offline time domain performance evaluation and real-time hardware-in-the-loop performance verification of microgrid control systems. Please welcome Arman Gasai presenting RTDS-based supervisory control performance verification for the AC multiple microgrid systems. Thank you, Katie, for the introduction. And hello, everyone. My name is Arman, and my presentation title is RTDS-based supervisory control performance verification for AC multiple microgrid systems. Before I start the presentation, I would like to acknowledge that the work in this presentation is part of my PhD dissertation under the supervision of Professor Reza Irawani. And the RTDS-based simulation platform that we're using the work is a property of Center of Applied Power Electronics at University of Toronto. Outline of the presentation is as follows. First, I'm going to explain why microgrid. What are the motivations and challenges? And why we need a concept called supervisor control? Then I'm going to introduce the multiple microgrid system, its value proposition, and an interesting application for First Nation community, communities in Northwest of Ontario. Then I'm going to describe the developed hierarchical supervisory control system, and finally supervisory control performance verification via RTDS PLCNX platform. Distribution systems are changing such that there are more penetration of renewable energies and EV charging stations. And these are acting as either intermittent generation sources or intermittent loads, which cause the system operator to not have a clear information about what's happening in the distribution system. For example, the system operator cannot precisely regulate the amount of power or energy that is being exchanged between the distribution system and the utility grid. Or let's say if the transmission line is subjected to a lightning and because of protection system, the transmission line opens, then the distribution system will be in an islanded condition. But because again of the lack of knowledge that the system operator has, it will completely shut down the distributor resources and EV charging stations, which means imposing anti-islanding policies. Microgrid which is a collection of distributor resources and loads, can be a solution to provide coordination for distributed systems and to resolve the issue of imposing anti-islanding policies, for example. And a key component in operating a microgrid is a storage system, which is fast, bidirectional, and dispatchable. To realize operation of microgrid, we need an entity which is like an intelligence and we call it supervisor control. This entity, 
receives measurements from the microgrid and it sends commands to the local control systems of distributed resources or it can also shed the loads of the microgrid. The intelligence or supervisory control at the same time can communicate with the utility via communication mediums like SCADA-based communication mediums. And because of the coordinated operation of microgrid, now it can respond to the utility by exporting energy and making profit for the microgrid owner. Or it can also provide, and this can be done by the supervisory control, assigning grid following commands to the storage system, such that, for example, if we have excess of generation internally in the microgrid, this excess of generation which can come from the renewable energy will be consumed by the storage system to maintain the power export to the utility at precisely capital E. The microgrid can also provide emergency power provision functions, which means responding to emergency power that the utility requires by exporting power and making more profit for the microgrid owner. This adds to the reliability of the system. Not only that, so in this condition that we're exporting power, if let's say we have shortage of internal power in the microgrid, the supervisory control can detect that and can command the storage system to dynamically discharge and compensate for the shortage of power. And also, again, if the transmission line is subjected to lightning or if the travers, the transmission towers topples because of a flood and the connection, electric connection is lost between utility and microgrid, which means that microgrid becomes islanded, then the intelligence or supervisory control can detect this as a discrete event and can command the storage system to start forming this islanded system, which means forming the voltage and frequency. In such condition, we may discharge the battery too much or charge it too much. For example, if we charge the battery too much and its state of charge hits a predetermined upper safe range, then the intelligence or supervisory control detects this as a discrete event and it can command the output generation of the renewable energies to be curtailed, to, to discharge the storage system and recover its SOC back in the safe range. We also can have a condition of too much discharge on the storage system, which can result in SOC of the storage system hitting a predetermined lower range. And again, this can be considered as a discrete event by the intelligence or supervisory control, and it can correspondingly curtail the loads of the system or shed the loads to recover its state of charge back in the safe range. So you see, I keep referring to the supervisory control system. So realizing a microgrid is all about a functional supervisory control system. But the key question is, does a distribution system look as simple as what we are seeing here? Of course not. Distribution system composed of multiple feeders located at different geographical areas. And the key point is that components in this distribution system can be at different operation states. For example, state of charge of batteries can be at normal or critical levels, and they are not necessarily at the same SOC level. Or at one geographical area, we can have sunny condition, at another geographical area, we can have cloudy condition. We may have wind blowing at one geographical area or not. So you see, we have a system with many scenarios. And we can have one feeder being disconnected from the system, or we can have multiple feeders being disconnected. So we are encountering a distribution system with many operational scenarios. Of course, this is just an example, but to proceed with a very simple case of two operation condition per component, for this example, we are looking at roughly 131,000 possible scenarios. That should be covered by the supervisory control system. And of course, for more components, this number will exponentially increase. Now, we consider this system as a multiple microgrid system to provide a solution, which means we look at each feeder as a microgrid, and the collection of these feeders is called multi-microgrid system. We also envision different operation modes for this system depending on the status of circuit breakers. Looking at CBM, if it is closed, we consider this system to be in grid connected mode. Meanwhile, each lower circuit breaker can be open or closed. For example, if CB4 is open, 
Now, MG4 constitutes an islanded single microgrid system, while MG123 structure three independently controlled grid connected microgrids. If CBM becomes open, now the system is in islanded mode. MG4 remains as an islanded single microgrid system while MG123 now form islanded three microgrid system. Okay, before I start talking about the operational solution for this multi microgrid system, I want to show its value by showing its application for a very interesting case study. There is a project called Northwest Ontario Bulk Planning Initiative. It's a collaboration between ISO, Hydro One, and Nextbridge. And the story behind this project is that there are First Nation communities in remote areas in Northwest of Ontario, and also there are mining industries and activities that are happening there. But all these communities and industries at the moment, they get electricity from diesel fuel-based generation units. And the cost of those units in terms of producing electricity is nine to 10 times higher than the case that those people have access to the provincial generation or the grid. For example, based on one study, each kilowatt hour of electricity generation from diesel fuel based units costs $1.14 per kilowatt hour. While for the same amount of generation, if they have access to the grid, the cost will reduce to $0.12 cent per kilowatt hour. And the ISO and Hydro One, they are planning to reinforce the transmission line in northwest of Ontario by adding roughly 475 megawatt of capacity and eventually the anticipated cost reduction of producing electricity is $1.5 billion per year. I haven't shown yet where is the application of multiple microgrid system, but I'm going to do it right now. If you can please take a look at Red Lake and Pickle Lake, which are also highlighted in this picture. These, in through these areas, the electricity will be provided to those remote communities and mining industries. And we are thinking about mapping this multiple microgrid system over those areas such that MG1, 2, and 3 gonna cover three remote communities. And there is a very famous mining area, mining industry and their activities happening there, the area is called Ring of Fire, and we are thinking about mapping MG4 to that area. And if we can make this multiple microgrid system to become operational, we can first of all make sure that the remote communities get benefit from clean energy because, of course, we are increasing the depth of penetration of renewable energies. Also, for each remote communities, they have the capability of exporting energy to the utility or to ISO in this case and make profit for their communities and for their people. In addition to that, they can respond to emergency power provisions which are issued by the utility and make more profit for their communities and for their assets, in fact. And not only that, if because of a lightning, we lose the connection between the utility and those remote communities, they will not get to any blackout condition. We can make sure that they have uninterrupted supply of power and energy by forming an islanded four microgrid system. And also if a fault happens internally in those areas, we can isolate the faulted area and we can then separate those remote communities by having one community as an island, a single microgrid system, and remaining the, remain the rest of the communities interconnected as island, a three microgrid system. So this will add to the resiliency of the system as well. Now, a key question is how complicated is the operation of this multiple microgrid system to design the supervisory control for it? In this system, we have four battery storage units with overall power capacity of 13 megawatt and energy capacity of 13 megawatt hour. We have 12 solar PV units with overall power capacity of 20 megawatt. And I should refresh our mind by saying that replacing each five megawatt of diesel fuel based generation saves roughly $20 million per year. The system is also equipped with 12 megawatt of backup diesel generator capacity Overall, average load of the system is 17 megawatt and peak load is roughly 32 megawatt. In addition to that, this system composed five circuit breakers. 
Each circuit breaker can be at an open or closed status, and the status of the breakers are not necessarily synchronized and are not the same. They operate independently. For this multiple microgrid system, which is just an example with five circuit breakers, we have 32 possible status combinations that should be covered by the supervisory control system. Of course, we can have more circuit breakers, and this number will exponentially increase. Complexity is not done yet. Let me show you the single line diagram of each microgrid. In microgrid 1, it's composed of rural feeders, four solar PV units, and a storage system. Microgrid 2 has a single rural feeder, four solar PV units, and a storage system. Microgrid 3 composed of airborne feeders, backup diesel generators, and a storage system. And last but not least, microgrid 4 has airborne feeders, four solar PV units, and a storage system. Key point is that within each microgrid, again, the supervisory control system should dynamically coordinate all these distributed resources. Now that I illustrate the complexity of operation, we are proposing a solution for developing the supervisory control system to operate this multiple microgrid system. We are proposing a two-layer hierarchical structure where at the local layer, there are supervisory controls envisioned and dedicated for each microgrid. Each local supervisory control provides internal operation for the corresponding microgrid by receiving measurements and commanding the local control systems of distributed energy resources. And in order to provide coordination between the local supervisory controls, we also envision a second layer as a coordinating layer with another supervisory control, which is called SCM. And SCM can communicate with the local supervisory controls, but I should highlight that SCM does not interfere with the internal operation of microgrids. Now, question is how to design each of these SC entities. Up to this point and up to this very slide, all the existing methods are ad hoc and heuristic, meaning that as a system designer, I'm going to grab a pen and paper and start thinking, how can I design and develop my flowchart by thinking through a heuristic method and approach and make sure that I cover all possible scenarios. If you remember, the order is in the scale of hundreds of thousands of scenarios that can happen. Even if I can cover all scenarios, can I guarantee to provide a solution for each scenario? Can I guarantee that I do not end up in these red rectangles, which we refer to as a blocking condition, because there is no path back to our flowchart? Can I guarantee that if I spend months and design a flowchart for an existing system, and I want to scale up my system, I have minimum adjustment on my, on my flowchart? Can I guarantee that? What if I want to break down my flowchart to soft flowcharts. Can I make sure that there is no confliction happening between them? So overall, this is not an automated solution. For the first time, in the context of microgrid operation and control, we use a well-established theory from control community called supervisory control theory. The theory systematically develops a supervisory control system, which guarantees to cover all possible scenarios from the system discrete model, in case of an event, it guarantees to provide the operational solution. It's non-blocking. It is non-conflicting. It is scalable. So overall, it's an automated solution. The way the development process works is that I have a SCT-based design tool, and inputs are my proposed strategy and the discrete model of my system, which is multi microgrid system in this case. Then the tool will automatically generate these pictures, which I call supervisor, and they are in the language of state machine, which are composed of circles and arrows. Each circle is a discrete state, meaning that the system will reside in for a while, and these arrows are discrete events, which happens instantaneously. A discrete event or arrow can represent an uncontrollable discrete event, like a state of charge of a battery hitting the upper safe range. Then the supervisor can enable a corresponding control action. For example, here is to curtail the output power of solar PV units to discharge the battery. Or another uncontrollable event can be sudden opening of a circuit breaker. And then the supervisor can change the control mode of a battery in that islanded system from grid following to grid forming. And eventually, I have multiple of these supervisors, each guarantees to be non-blocking 
and their collective action is guaranteed to be non-conflicting. And eventually, for operation of the multi-microgrid system, I have 48 of these decentralized supervisors. So now that we developed a supervisory control system, the methodology is to first collect offline simulation results from this hybrid platform where the multiple microgrid and local control systems are simulated in PSCAD EMTDC software and interface with the supervisory control, which is modeled in MATLAB Stateflow toolbox. Offline results are collected as a verification benchmark to validate the accuracy of data that are collected from this hardware in the loop structure, where the multiple microgrid and local control systems are simulated in real time in RTDS platform and the supervisory control is directly implemented in PLCNX. And the results of real time platform will give us more confidence for the controller to be ready for field tests. So thanks to the availability of five racks at Central Applied Power Electronics, I could simulate this extensive system over the infrastructure that I had, the real-time RTDS simulator, such that I distributed the system, the multiple microgrids, based on the processing power of each rack and the complexity of simulating each microgrid. For example, the order is MG4, MG2, MG3, the sub-transmission network, and MG1. Because MG4 is more complicated in terms of simulation, and we have more processing power in rack 1. And eventually, thanks to the fiber enhanced backplane connection between the five racks, I could simulate this extensive system with roughly 600 electric nodes and 18 distributors resources in real time with a time step of 80 microseconds. I also hardwired the real time simulators of RTDS with PLCNX platform and the hardware in the loop structure is shown in this picture. I also have a map of the hardware in the loop signals. On the left side, I show what is happening, what we have internally in the RTDS platform. We have access to 19 PB5 processing cards, which are connected to analog and digital cards and GTNet card via fiber optic connections. Then 26 analog signals goes to PLCNX and four analog signals comes back to RTDS. 31 digital signals comes to RTDS and five digital signals goes back to PLCNX. So we have wealth of information through IO's connections. Also, to represent the communication between host grid, utility, and the multiple microgrid system, I enabled Modbus TCP protocol between PLCNX and GTNet card. To verify the performance of supervisory control system, finally, I'm going to show you two case studies. First case studies regarding voltage support function of the supervisory control system, where the multiple microgrid system is initially connected to a strong host speed with short circuit ratio of 12.2 at PCCN, and it is importing real and reactive power of 6 MW and 6 MVAR. Then at time equal to 32 seconds, the SCR drops to 0.1 and voltage at PCC 1, 2, 3, 4 and M, which are PCC 1, 2, 3, 4 are shown here and PCC M is here, voltage will drop and the voltage value at PCC M is received by SCM at 32.031 seconds. Sorry, 32.030 second. In one millisecond, SCM determines new values for range of power import and reference values for voltage to be regulated at PCC1 to PCC4 and in order to support voltage at PCC. These commands are received by local supervisory controls at 32.040 second. And in one millisecond, local supervisory controls issues commands which are received by the corresponding batteries at 32.050 seconds. And as a result, voltage starts increasing at all PCCs and supported at PCCM at roughly one per unit. I also show the case that supervisory control does not provide function. And as you can see, the system will collapse. Of course, because of the voltage support function, the amount of real power import is reduced from 6 MW to 1.5 MW, and now reactive power is exported to the host grid in order to support voltage. I also show a comparison between offline and real-time results, and the closed agreement validates the accuracy of data that were collected from hardware in the loop structure. And the deviations in all voltage values comply with 
IEEE 1547 standard. Last case is intentional eye landing of the multiple microgrid system, where initially the system does not exchange any power with the utility. Then at 5.011 seconds, because of an internal issue with the utility, SCM decides to open CBM. The command of opening receives by CBM at 5.012 seconds, and the open status is received back by SCM at 5.020 seconds. Then in 1 millisecond, SCM issues grid forming commands, which are received by the local supervisory controls at 5.022 seconds. The local supervisory controls at the same time collect state of charge of the corresponding battery. And in this case, SOC4 is below a safe range of 10%. So charging state is determined for battery 4, while for battery 1, 2, and 3, multi-slack bus state is determined. And finally, all these states are received back by SCM. The operation is confirmed because three out of the four batteries are forming the grid, which are battery one, two, and three. And eventually, the local supervisory controls will command the batteries at 5.028 seconds to form this islanded multiple microgrid system. And I also collected the results of instantaneous voltage and frequency at PCC 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are shown in this, in this picture, and the deviations in instant, instantaneous voltages and frequencies are complying with IEEE 1547 standard. So both illustrated case studies verifies the performance of supervisory control in a hardware in the loop structure where the multiple microgrid system is simulated in real time in RTDS platform. Thank you so much for your attention. I will be more than happy to hear your questions. You can also have my email for future correspondence. Okay, great. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation, for both of our presentations from Arman and Shailendra. And thanks to our audience for your attention today. Nice to see a very global audience again uh, to have joined us. So before we wrap up today, let's get to uh, a few questions for our presenters. And you're still welcome, everyone, to submit your questions if they come to you in the Q&A window, and we will try to get to them. So let's start with a question for Arman. Arman, I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the PLC Next platform that you used um, and, and how that worked and how it was programmed. And particularly, how fast is the data exchange between the RTDS and the PLC Next? I'm not sure, Katie. First of all, I want to thank for moderating this session. And can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. OK, OK. Uh, so regarding the question, uh, PLCNX is a state-of-the-art platform that is developed by Phoenix Contact. And a unique feature about PLCNX is its processing time, which is unlike conventional PLCs, is, is much faster than them. I could achieve one millisecond of processing time for PLCNX. So I would say the unique feature is its processing time. And another salient feature is about the implementation process that they have. I developed my supervisory control system in MATLAB state flow toolbox. And then I direct implemented on TLCNX without any additional line of coding, which was really, which really facilitated the process for me. So I think I covered two parts of the question. I think the last part was regarding the data exchange speed between RTDS and PLCNX, that depends on the signal that is being exchanged. Some of the signals are representing time critical events like opening of a circuit breaker, which I exchanged with transmission rate of two milliseconds. And the communication latency at each time interval was in the order of microsecond because I had IO I mean, infrastructure. And in real case, people should use fiber optic uh, based communication mediums for that. But there are some non-time critical signals like a state of charge of batteries, which communicated each 500 milliseconds. 
it that transmission rate. So the broad range is between two milliseconds to five hundred milliseconds for my case study. Excellent. Thank you uh, so much, Arman. Let's go to a question for Shailendra. Uh, Shailendra, relating to the local controller uh, work, the dynamic voltage control using the smart inverter, could you talk about how those local measurements and control signals are communicated between the local controller and the RTDS simulator? Shailendra, are you uh, with us to address the question? Hello? Uh, I am I not audible. Audible? Hello? OK, fine. So when we uh, actually when we run the simulation in RTDS to in actual real time, so actually when the uh, inverter based local DR controller get the measurements, uh, locally measurements, uh, as a as it uh, simulation is running in distribution mode so it has uh, a larger simulation time than power system mode so in this study i have used around uh, 150 i think 150 or 120 microsecond so uh, when uh, any reduction in occurs in uh, uh, power out dr power outage so uh, that corresponds to voltage drop occurs that nodes so resulting that uh, deviation in voltage in that node a uh, controller have a dead band range according to dead band range it uh, try to uh, select the operation of voltage controller so maybe it uh, depends upon control uh, voltage uh, higher range or upper lower land so it selects and then after uh, few after the few cycles it uh, trigger the output that is suppose we if a voltage drop at uh, t equal to t naught so reactive power that time q q q0 then next q t plus one time the reactive power co uh, controller uh, proposed local controller trigger the reactive power at t equal to t plus one according to voltage profile of t naught so that's uh, measurements coming locally and getting the control to local controllers if we talk about how local controller work in controlling with like co simulation platform as smart inverters can work on both uh, time scale, slow and fast time. In fast time scale, is generally we required uh, uh, very much uh, fast control action. Like it only, it is actually uh, communication free local controller. It does not communicate to any other controller or others uh, like a centralized controller or something uh, to get the output. It it uh, get the measurements locally and produce the output signal according to local signal. This is local. But when we when it worked with centralized controller, so as I discussed in co-simulation co -simulation platform, each 15 minutes interval, we are getting new set points of smart inverter. So smart inverters gets 15 minutes uh, interval each in, in each interval, where reactive power compensation set points. But within 15 minutes, it's something uh, occurs like transient or something uh, occurs. So that times it's not con communicating uh, the central controller it depends upon local controller so it will uh, compensate the reactive power according to need addition and subtract subtraction of reactive power in centralized control algorithm so after 15 minutes it again reset by the central controller so that's way it communicate the reactive power compensation voltage control through locally and centralized control excellent Hello? thank you shailandra um, let's go to a question for Arman. Um, mm -hmm. You're talking about multiple microgrid systems for, for supervisory control applications. How exactly do you find these systems available in the real power system? Is this a, a network configuration that, that exists? And, uh, and how do you go about finding those? Uh, sure, that, that's a great question. So multiple microgrids usually compose of feeders which are in close electric proximity to each other and electric proximity means that they are usually in close geographical proximity as well and there are feeders in distribution systems up to 10 feeders i can say at least in Toronto distribution systems which are in close electrical proximity 
and they are operationally coupled, meaning that if we suddenly change the power flow to one feeder, it will affect the power flow to the adjacent feeders. So those are systems which can represent a multiple microgrid system, and they are prevalent. Excellent, thank you. Um, before we close, let's go for a question um, for both of you. Um, maybe we'll start with Armand, but my question is about the representation of DERs with switched models versus averaging models to represent the converters. Um, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about um, which, which representation you chose for those and why. Sure. Uh, so the type of representation really depends on your case study and your objective. In my case, because the objective was to evaluate and verify the performance of supervisory control system, the average model was good enough to represent the average behavior of the multiple microgrid system. For example, my supervisory control system does not need to react to switching harmonics. Those are not piece, a piece of information which trigger the supervisory control system or those phenomena, I would say. So I proceeded with average model. Meanwhile, to make sure that my average model is, um, is uh, its accuracy is validated, I compared the results of switching model and average model for a single VR. Then I made sure that my average model is accurate in terms of results. I then took the frequency-based or average model to represent my whole multiple microgrid system. Thank you. Great. Uh, Shailendra, I, I wonder if you would comment on uh, the representation of DERs in distribution mode. I'm totally agree with Arman. Actually, uh, this is uh, what you ask this question is very important for me also. When I am going to any like interview or any panel, they just always question you how, why you are using average models. If suppose if uh, any person is belong to power electronics field, then it uh, mostly triggered this question. How we are designing your converters, uh, then I am explaining the things, but they are not getting nothing. This is the very, I am problem also getting in any any uh, any other interview also. So I am explaining that times it depends upon problem. What are the problem choosing? What's your problem? So it depends, again, it depends upon your problem. If you are using, doing problem which uh, does not uh, depends upon much time uh, real time which work upon it near about real time or it's a time scale problem so if you are working with, if you are studying like transient study i think that time maybe actually i haven't work on this uh, i have work only in average model because for my study is it is it model suits for uh, it suits for all studies like but when we are going for uh, sub transient study then uh, we have to design our converter whatever they are studying in their model like arman what did it but if you are uh, studying the problem like a distribution system where we where you have sufficient time there is not a such any condition within few se few, few second your system going to collapse so in that case where you have sufficient time of operation distribution system have large sufficient time of operation you can control your devices according to your time scale. So in that scenario, uh, average model, I think, best suited for a study. Uh, like this, you can use as available in RTDS, RSK library distribution board. Actually, before uh, developing any, like uh, getting the average model, built average model in RSK version, I, I also own developed my average own model in, with the help of an aerial person, uh, 2018. I think that time, early stage of distribution mode of coming in RTDS. So that I, I asked some uh, uh, RTDS person, I met him PS General Meeting 2018, how we go for this average model, all these things. So then he clearly helped me and said, after a couple of months, you will get new models in RSK library. Thanks to RTDS person, they also helped me that time. So this is the a prime problem. Again, I, I am going to discuss, I am not so clear about these things, but my perception, my vision is clear that if you are studying a time framework in distribution mode 
or your uh, your problem problem is not related to much more time dependence like a, uh, like a, a learning where where few second is matter for your study if your few if you you have allowable for few second for your study then average model is sufficient and work profusely profusely and i have proved in my uh, phd thesis also so you can work on this and uh, get the some analysis on like fast control devices and distributions Excellent. Thank you both for those comments. Uh, and yeah, it's good to hear about RTDS support being involved there. Those, <clears throat> those average models, uh, you know, were implemented in the past couple of uh, years. So that's good to hear. I think before we close, I will have Armand maybe flesh out a question that is happening in the chat window. The question oh, yeah. is, yeah, the question is, in the case of making inverter-based DERs, grid forming, is there any way to implement virtual inertia in the grid side converter of the wind farm in the RTDS or in PSCAD? And we can't penetrate 100% renewables because of the grid following feature. This is a good philosophical question about a more inverter-based uh, network. So Armand, if you want to give your sure. comments, that would be great. Sure, thanks for the question. It's a pretty comprehensive question. So regarding the first portion, which is about uh, emulation of virtual inertia, yes, there are a couple of techniques like nonlinear uh, frequency power curves that are incorporated in local control systems. Or there is another method called a uh, virtual resistance that, to the best of my knowledge, is um, embedded in local control systems to represent the natural inertia that exists in rotating machine. There are a couple of techniques. And regarding the second portion where Mosa asked, we can't penetrate 100% renewables to the grid. I am not sure if he's referring to utility grid or to macro grid. If, we, if you're connected to the utility grid, not having natural inertia in our distribution system is not an issue because the host grid acts as a as a slack bus and it maintains the frequency and the voltage of the micro grid if it is a strong host grid. But if you are in islanded mode, then yes, not having natural inertia is more controversial. But in that case, I had a 100% renewable based micro grid, islanded micro grid in my study because you are using a dispatchable unit like battery system as the slack bus or the grid forming unit which takes care of regulation of voltage and frequency then not having natural inertia is not an issue to keep the system stable and up and running but for sure this is a big challenge like because not having natural inertia in, we are going to encounter a system with different characteristics from control point of view from protection point of view this is the challenge right now. So I, I hope I could address the question, but most of if you have any more comments, please let me know. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I think we're out of time, so we will wrap up. If you're listening on demand, uh, I encourage you to submit questions via the Q&A, and those will go by email to our presenters. Also, if you head to the handouts area, uh, there is a user spotlight series survey that you can access in addition to the slides from today. So if you'd like to give your feedback, we'd really like that. And with that, I want to thank both of our presenters. Thank you, Armand and Shailendra. Uh, and I hope everyone has a great uh, day, afternoon, or evening. Thank you, Katie. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.